All right, what do we got here? We're doing more Vintage Cube. Uh, we've got a couple interesting cards. Um, things that stand out to me is generally taking fixing early is always pretty good. Badlands is not the greatest fixing. You usually want blue in there because you can splash things like Factor Fiction. Um, but it still is fixing, so I like that. I like Crucible of Worlds because it, for me, I just really like strip mining people. And I don't think I've done that this cube yet. Hard to remember, but um, that's a good option. Coercive Portal is like colorless card draw is pretty nice too and then factor fiction is just like a good blue card um so you could first pick splinter twin as well but i just don't really value the twin combo that highly so what are we gonna do i kind of want to just take crucible of worlds that way any strip mine or fast bond i see i can just go off i know it's not what you should do but i have not yet drafted the crucible deck uh no 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 we're gonna wheel it i'm gonna take factor fiction here we're gonna wheel crucible of worlds that's the plan. Because nobody's as crazy as I am. Nobody's going to first pick him, right? I can just take a Consecrated Sphinx now. This card's awesome. I don't think I've had much opportunity to draft it, but it's very good with like Time Twister Time Spiral because you put it into play, you draw your entire deck because you draw seven, your opponent draws seven, and then every time they draw a card, you draw two. So like Memory Jar draws you 21 cards with the Consecrated Sphinx in play. It's quite good. Um, there is those Conscripts, just to note. I think that card is pretty great, but I'm not going to take it there. Oh, uh, okay. There's a Gristlebrand. So Gristlebrand's good in Reanimator and like Sneak Attack, things like that. Um, there's Time Warp and there's a Cabal Ritual is mostly what I'm looking at. I guess Sphinx of the Steel Wind to a lesser effect if you're going for like Tinker or something like that. I kind of want to just take Time Warp. Um, I'd... It's also possible to draft like a Thousand Year Storm Time Warp deck, which is kind of cool. Although I think Time Warp is actually probably worse than Cabal Ritual in general, but we'll take the Warp and see what happens. There's a Force of Will. There's also an Underground Sea. Both are good. I think I'm going to take the Force, because right now we just have blue cards, and yeah. I doubt Underground Sea comes around, but that's okay. Ah! <laughs> oh no, it's there! Oh gosh. There's no way, because... Oh no, there's no way it comes around. I could have done it. I could have just had this. Hmm... I mean, I'm taking it. That's unfortunate. Like, Polluted Delta, Dark Ritual, Charter Course are all great. But Strip Mine, very near and dear to my heart, is the card we're going to go for. Oh, okay. So, I'm seeing a lot of Storm go around once. The question is, will it go around twice? Because I think Inquisition is probably the best card in this pack. And is more likely to be good. But Tendrils, I'll keep it open. I don't think I'm going to be playing any Inquisition nonsense. There's a Past in Flames. There's also Manamorphose. I do actually like Manamorphose quite a bit. And Past in Flames is... Actually, we saw Gifts Ungiven, so I can take this. There's a Gifts Ungiven in the next pack, I think, or one of the upcoming packs. I'll take Duress. Duress is pretty good if you have Tendrils. We're hoping nobody else picked up on Storm and I just get to do it. Because if people picked up on it, then I just took Strip Mine and instead of Dark Ritual. Oh, man, that sucks. Yeah, I think the pick there was probably Dark Ritual if I was going to do this. Because I just, like... We'll see what happens. I'm not getting Dark Ritual. I think that's pretty clear, but I might get Crucible. I think it would be this pack for me to get Crucible of Worlds. Was Gifts Ungiven? Oh, I don't even get Crucible of Worlds. Man, all right. Well, this should have been a Dark Ritual, but that's okay. We can take Badlands, which is just good fixing. And then I think basically what we see in the next couple packs determines what we're going to do. Because we saw a lot of Storm the first time around, and I kind of took a little bit of it at the end. But if Storm's not open, we can always just kind of, you know, we used a couple picks and count that as a loss and move on. I am so sad I didn't get Crucible. And I think this was the pack with Cabal Ritual. So I don't think I'm getting that either. I can take a Colagon's Command because I do have a Badlands. And this card is actually quite decent. Um, I think Gifts Ungiven also got taken. So, oh no, okay. Cabal Ritual went around... It there's a non-zero chance I get Dark Ritual, I guess. It's, I mean, you would play Dark Ritual in even like a control deck. So I doubt it. The Kissing Quagmire. We'll see what I get. Vivian Reed. That's a pretty late Vivian Reed. Also some late white cards. Um, I'm more likely to want white. And I think Thraben Inspector is actually better than Elspeth. I know, hot take, right? That's a, also a late Fire Blast. So we got, <laughs> we have a start. But I think Gifts and Given got picked up for some reason. I think both me and someone else realized that Storm was open and went for it, and now we're both not going to get it, which is unfortunate, but we... Well, there's a Mock Sapphire. That helps. 
Bolus' Citadel is also pretty good. Like, I can just Tendrils the old-fashioned way. But we're going to take Mox. And I'm basically not in any deck right now. But I imagine we're going to end up, like, Mardu after... <laughs> Who would have guessed after this start? I, I think I picked these cards in order, and I might end up Mardu. We'll see. I'm kind of sad I passed Inquisition, though. I think I passed it for Tendrils. Hmm, okay. I can take Figure of Destiny, or a Blood Crypt, or an Ophiomancer. If I take Blood Crypt, this makes the black-red much more consistent. I have 3 minutes Spectre Duress, probably not playing Cabal Ritual. I'm not opposed to still playing these blue cards, they're very good, but I didn't see much blue coming around, so I think blue is cut pretty hard. So I think we're going to move into Figure of Destiny, because I do have Strip Mine. This is going to be the Audible of the Century. Now I can take like a Phyrexian Revoker. I do like me a Phyrexian Revoker. There's a Jace, Seachrome Coast, yeah we'll take the Revoker. Ooh, Fallen Shinobi. I actually like that card a lot. Um, I would need to put blue in my Mardu deck. Um, otherwise there's Jace Bridge Prodigy, not a whole lot else, so I'll take this. We'll see what we can do here, maybe we still play blue, and I'm like, Esper aggro? Not the craziest thing I've ever heard of. I'm gonna take Thoughtseize, because I think black is relatively open, and the early disruption is really valuable. I'm missing out on Concealed Courtyard, which is quite good, but it's possible that that comes around. Okay, Days is great, so maybe I'm blue-black, or Grixis. I like Days. Because I have good blue cards, right? All of these are very playable. This is a 4-drop. That's not a 4-mana play. There we go. Um, Tundra, Shriek Maw, Frost Titan. I think I really do like Path to Exile, but I don't think I'm going to play it. I'm just going to take Tundra because the more, more duels you have, the better fetch lands get. So, like, for example, if I get a black-white fetch, now it also taps for blue. Um, Blade Splicer, Beaumont Courier, Faithless Looting... Not playing Ink Eyes. Could take Beaumont Courier. I do have a bad land, but but am I am I playing white? I could be blue, white, black. That seems somewhat reasonable. We're working through this together, okay? This goes in. This goes in. Uh man, it's only aggro decks that are open right now, which is not what I wanted, but it's probably what I deserve. I don't think I'm ever resolved. Like I don't think I have the mana for Relic Warder, although maybe it's possible. My red is like kind of bad. All right, Relic Warder get in the deck. Wow, Riftwing came around. What the heck? Also Sun Titan? I don't know what's going on anymore, but I'll take a Riftwing Cloud Skate. That card's awesome. Seachrom Coast? Okay. <laughs> we're slowly, <laughs> slowly getting there. Um, So we're like blue-white with the black splash, maybe? What is Nissa doing in there? Get out of there. I'll take, I mean, it's probably green that's open, yeah. That's a relatively late questing beast. The, the deck, this deck probably needs land tax. I don't know what we're doing exactly, but if we're trying to play this many colors, we probably need this. And if we're not, then that's fine too, but I don't think questing beats is really going to fit in this deck. There's upheaval, also opposition. So we do have mock sapphire to make upheaval like, okay. Verdant catacombs can grab badlands right now, which is okay. Opposition is like very good. Especially in a deck like this. But I don't think I'm going to wheel the Catacombs. And the Catacombs is like the secret to casting Duress. Will I wheel Opposition though? That's the question. Because this card's absurd. I think the answer is no. I'm going to go for the better deck and just see what I can get. There's my Yawgmoth's Will. RIP Storm. And High Tide in the same pack too. Here I'm going to take Teferi. It's going to be good kind of no matter what we end up in. I'm hoping to wield Dark Confidant because literally nobody respects it. But Armageddon would be a good failsafe as well. Um, so Arid Mesa can grab Tundra and Badlands. There's also Vendillion Click, but I think I need this fixing if I want to play Thoughtseize Duress. And I think I do because Fallen Shinobi is so good here. Ooh, Brazen Borrower. I'm a pretty big fan of Brazen Borrower. There's also a Ponder. Um, I think I want the Borrower. This deck tries to tempo. I was, oh, I was looking at Revel Arc. So it's good with Silverblade, Riftwing, Relic Warder. Actually, there's a lot of decent cards with it. But I think Borrower fits better for this type of deck. Trying to be a little aggro. Like, bounce a thing, untap, play opposition, tap the thing. I like that. It's a little bit awkward that our splash color is like turn one plays. Um, that makes things way harder to make work. And it's possible that we can fit a Kolagon's command in here. 
because we have Arid Mesa Badlands, but I'm not like 100%. This is actually a decent Snapcaster Mage deck. Um, Azori's Signet also helps with the mana, but Snapcaster, Duress, Thoughtseize, Daze, Disenchant, Time Warp, yeah, I'll take Snap. He's also really good with opposition. Like the body's relevant there, but I think at this point I have enough playables, right? I have 622, so I need one more playable, which could just be like land tax. Um, or no, Strip Mine, I'll play 18 lands in this deck. Oh, Godless Shrine helps a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like balance and stuff, but this is fetchable. We're black white. Um, I can take Geist? I can take Kitesail Freebooter. I'm actually really high on disruption like this because I don't have much counter magic in this deck. Um, I do have Mox Sapphire, which lets us turbo out a Geist of St. Traft. But I think disruption of this kind is actually going to be better for our deck. He also only costs two. Elspeth is fine, but we just don't really want to get up to six mana. This deck is actually looking kind of good. Um, probably not Silverblade Paladining and maybe not Disenchanting. But this deck looks very disruptive. The mana is just really awkward. But Kolgon's command is very good. So it might be worth splashing off of our uh, two red sources. Probably not. Oh man, there's so many good cards if we do splash black here. But I'm just going to take Caracas. I think there was a Vendillion click. But it might have been in this pack. But this is just a Plains with Upside. And I don't, I don't want to go too far into other colors. Yeah, so we didn't get the Vendillion click. That's... Unfortunate, but I think I took something good over it. I do like Flicker Wisp. It's good with a uh, Blade Splicer, Snapcaster Mage, Graven Inspector, things like that. Do I have any? Maybe I actually need Face Fetters because I don't have any removal for creatures. Yeah, actually, I think I, I need a bit of removal, so we'll take the Fetters. There's the Dark Confidant. Um, I love Armageddon, but this is actually a pretty good Dark Confidant deck. Although Tide Hollow Scholar, I could just have all the early discard creatures. Nah, Confidant's too good. Proactivity. Uh, Kaya. Okay. Kaya's actually kind of nice too. And there's a Shambling Vent for more fixing. And so far, Grandmaster, I don't have any real combos with it. But we'll see. Alright, well this deck, despite my best efforts, ended up like somewhat decent. I have 23 playables. Although, I think I want to play 18 land in this deck because Strip Mine is quite good. And my mana is a bit ambitious, so like I don't think I can afford a colorless land. Maybe I can. I actually have a good chunk of fixing for... At this point, I'm only three colors. What would I cut? I actually like main deck in Kaya because there's just so much stuff she can get. And then her ultimate actually is pretty decent in an aggressive deck as well. I'll take Ingress Rampage. Wow. All right. Well, that's a good card. Pretty. I did not expect to get Geist the last pick. I think I'm actually going to cut Consecrated Sphinx, as crazy as it sounds, because that's our top end. This is making Force of Will look worse. Hmm. This is making Force of Will look worse. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, oh, actually, I have a decent amount of early counter spells, but I could also do something like this and just be more aggressive and then just bring in Force of Will Consecrated Sphinx for the matchups that I need it for. Let's see what the mana looks like. We're not playing Quagmire. So with this fixing right now, I have one, two, three, four blue sources, one, two, three, four, five, six white sources, and black I have one, two, three, four. That's actually not the worst. So I have six white sources, seven, eight makes sense. I'm not playing any red, so that gives me more black. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven black sources is actually pretty good here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six seven blue and i can cut a card for a land if i need to but this goes down here i could just get rid of time warp although is bad time walk still good in a deck like this that's the question i have to ask myself because i can have the curve stop at four and just put disenchant in i think time warp's just too expensive like five mana it's just going to be stuck in my hand for most of the game and grandmaster i don't have i, I technically have the soulfire grandmaster time warp combo but that requires nine mana, so I think we're just going to run the deck like this. See you guys round one. I'm excited to see how this deck plays out because look at this. I just need blue mana, actually. <laughs> I'm pretty, I really need blue mana here. But if I hit blue mana, then I can like freebooter into Fallen Shinobi. I give them the card back, but the whole point of freebooter is that you just slow them down, right? I like play freebooter, take their signet, and hope for the best. Mm, okay, Freebooter's looking less good. Oh, actually, Silverblade's kind of nice. So I'm going to play a Plains. 
because I don't have any double black cards. And this way I can play an island to play Silverblade next turn if I need to. Well, I did say I was going to take a Signet. What the heck? Um, I think we're set up for this matchup. They have a bunch of ramp. There's a Steam Vents. <laughs> was not expecting that. I'm going to take the Signet. Um, Golgari Signet. I don't think it really... Oh my gosh. Why does it do it twice? So I get rid of this, 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 this. In their hand, they got rid of Selesnia Signet Steam Vents. And then they're going to play Sakura Tribal there. So they're going to have one, two, three, four, five mana. But they don't have any like lands. Okay. I can duress away the Tooth and Nail. But that's not super necessary. What I'm going to... Oh my gosh. What I'm going to do... Soulbond, as long as you control both of them. So I can play Silverblade Paladin. Soulbond with a Freebooter attack. Then, if I draw a blue source, I can Ninjutsu... Soul Bond with Fallen Shinobi and get double Fallen Shinobi triggers. I am so hoping for a blue man off the top. Oh, Soul Bond here. Because as, long, as soon as I draw blue, this, this boy is getting in. I want a double Shinobi. I'm very intrigued about this Steam Vents action. It could be a way for Arid Mesa to get blue and they're splashing like Ancestral Recall or something. Yeah, that seems probably what's happening. Oh no, they drew something. Okay. Golos for... Oh, it could also be to activate Golos. One, two, three, four, five, six. Field of Ruin. All right, deck, give me blue. Blue, 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 blue. No! That's fine. Um, I'm gonna duress. Man, that's so sad. Dismiss their hand and then reveal, take tooth and nail. Incubation to a crater hug. Play Blade Splicer. Hit them for two. I don't know why their life total is so low. Oh, I guess Steam Vents plus Elves of Deep Shadow hurting them. And they're going to play Incubation Druid. If they drew a land, they can actually level it up. Uh, they would have to draw a green source specifically. They drew a land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, right. Goalless activation. They drew Ugin! Oh, no. What if they just Sun Titan? Then I draw a blue source. Uh-oh. What are you doing with Ugin? Minus three. Mmm... I don't like this. Oh, you can play any number? Alright, that was a good Golos hit. That's what I would have hit with my... Ah, uh, I was so close! I think I'm very dead, though. Yep. They're taunting me. They're just taunting me. Um, It's not over, actually. So I can play Mark Sapphire. And opponent... Three, four, five, six. Okay, I don't think they can cast Crater Hoof here. Unless Arid Mesa can find... So we wait. The problem is that they're going to Ugin my golem. Doesn't find green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're gonna get another mana off of Sun Titan and then just recast Ugin. So we gotta get really lucky here. I think I should have just attacked with the golem. Yeah, we needed them to not do that. Because they're gonna do that, then somehow cast a crater hoof. Yep, they drew the green source. Oh boy. So I'm not even going to show Brazen Borrower. Yeah, we're dead. Um, so in response, I bounce Sun Titan. One, two, three. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a way I can come back from this. So I don't want to let them know I'm playing blue. This definitely seems like a Force of Will matchup, which means Sphinx and Time Warp come in. Uh, Disenchant actually has a good number of targets. Kaya has a good number of targets. Geist is actually pretty weak against the green decks because like, Maybe he's pretty good on the play. I don't love Silverblade Paladin. Three app updates. Oh, cool, cool. Um, probably not playing Sphinx, and then I need to make one more cut. Maybe it is just Time Warp. I just keep Force of Will with like a couple blue cards. That's probably fine. Their deck is very, very mana hungry, so if we can just stall them out a little bit, we should be okay. Again, if I had hit a blue source, like at any point there, I win on the spot almost. Mm, let's go first. Okay. Arid Mesa can get blue. I think. I don't know if it can get blue. Let me check, because that actually matters. I have a Tundra, so it can in fact get blue. So we can go turn two, suspend Cloud Skate. Turn three, Kaya their mana elf. I like that. I'm not gonna fetch early, just in case they have strip mine or something. Yeah, I want Tundra here, because that's all my color. There's a Badlands. Okay, that is truly all of my colors. Let's go Swamp Cloud Skate. Hope they play a Mana Elf that I can hit with Kaya. You're not something I can hit with Kaya. Ooh, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, let's... 
Bounce you. And then I have days available. Nobody would play around days from the black white deck. Yes. So I get to daze their two drop and then Kaya the elves. Oh man, that is some sequencing that I am happy with. And to fairy. So I think I would rather get down Kaya. Sell this. Next turn I get to bounce two things, one with Rift Wing Cloudscape, one with Teferi. And this is what the deck is supposed to do. What does she do? Exile two cards from a single grave. Okay, so I could just exile all their stuff. And her ultimate does damage to them equal to the number of cards they own in exile. Okay, okay, perfect. So this is going to bounce Razor Verge Thicket. Because that actually enters tapped. And then we're going to Teferi the Knight. Ooh, that was Teferi the Knight. I guess I do want to use the Mox here because it's possible I draw like a white spell I want to cast. Bounce this. Dark Confidant. If I draw Dark Confidant, I will be forever happy. Oh, that's actually quite good. So, exile this. Good for two. Go ahead. You're at three mana forever. I mean, Knight is still good, don't get me wrong. And I don't currently have a way to deal with it, but... We got Factor Fiction, we got things. Fallen Shinobi! We're here, it's time. It's time. I don't want to like pass through. Get in there! One, two, three, uh, four. Because if I hit a land, I can resuspend the Cloudscape. No! No! You're no fun! Fine. Um, I really feel like I want Coligon's Command in this matchup. Because so many other things are artifacts or die to Colgon's Command. Like this killing an artifact and a creature is pretty good, but I only have two red sources. And I think Force of Will is, well, basically I need to decide, do I want Force of Will or do I want Colgon's Command? I think I'll keep Force of Will because I can even just hard cast it. Like I'll be around five mana when they, when they start going off, this hand is good. There's a land, so I can do this. See what they got going on. Decide if I'm going to strip mine or not. Field of Ruin Incubation Druid. That's their only green source. I guess I, yeah, I can't do that and strip mine. What am I thinking? Fortunately, Duress Whiff, but that's okay. So next turn, I'm going to Teferi bounce their thing. Yeah, actually, I don't get to lock them out of green, which is unfortunate. Okay, play this. I don't want them to know about strip mine. Play this. Play you. Bounce you. Okay, Kaya's pretty good. So they played the planes. They drew, okay, so they drew another green source. And they drew Reclamation Sage? Bro, who even are you? What the heck? That's not even cool. And then that kills Teferi and there's nothing I can do about it. And they drew a green source for my... I mean, I drew blue, but Teferi's going down. Not a big fan of that. Let's play Kaya. Oh, I need black. Ah, that, that double good draw for them is a bit... Um, I'm just gonna not exile anything. I think that's the only artifact in my deck. <laughs> I mean, it worked. They, they reclamation staged me. They played the island we know about. They killed Teferi. Yep. They play Knight. Mmm. I really want to play Dark Confidant right now. One, two, three, four. The problem is Knight of the Reliquary lets them turbo out a Sun Titan, which then gives them a ton of mana. So I don't think I can do that. I think I actually have to Fate Sweaters the Knight. It's just too much ramp. Plus one, do nothing. She's gonna get hit, which is actually, she's gaining me like a good bit of life. Okay, yeah, she's gained some amount of life and they can't, they can play Field of Ruin. Knight of Reliquary is gone. They can play Incubation Druid. They kill my Strip Mine, which is honestly not so bad. I can get double blue now for Force of Will. And Kaya can make sure Sun Titan doesn't get that back. Yeah, I think I want double blue. Red. <laughs> but it's got full Warburg. I respect it. Incubation Druid. Okay. So next turn, they don't actually have white mana for Sun Titan. Unless they drew it. Okay, well, we're going in. Playing Dark Confidant. I can force of will pitching Fallen Shinobi, but that's going to literally kill me. Not physically. Emotionally. That might actually be the play, though. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I don't want to have to do this. Okay. Interesting. So this becomes one, two, three, four, five. So they're going to adapt for Kaya. That's cool. So Kaya's dying, but she didn't really, she made them not Sun Titan there, which is good. That wall of roots is problematic though. Come on deck. Give me something good. Reason borrower. Okay. I'm going to go land attack with Dark Confidant because if they don't block, they're in a whole world of trouble and I'm not going to block with him. No, they saw the line. It's fine. Um, I couldn't Brazen Borrower into Fallen Shinobi there, for those wondering. And here, I imagine I'm just going to be hard casting Force of Will on a Sun Titan, or something even scarier like a Crater Hoof. Well, this is a tempting target, whatever it is. Green Sun Zenith for Crater Hoof. So, no. Can I draw Thoughtseize to hit the Sun Titan? That would be great. And they attack. Okay, I need... um. An untapped land now, just any untapped land. Ah, uh, it's fine. I can still attack. They block, it makes sense. I think I'm just gonna Rich Wing Cloud Skate the Incubation Druid. That sets them back quite a bit, and they can't actually cast a Sun Titan now. Then next turn, I can Fallen Shinobi the Rift Wing, and then Brazen Borrower. Don't really mind taking two. They drew the white source. All right. They're not. Why are they not casting Sun Titan? I actually don't get it. There's our land. All right. Get what you got, deck. Attack with the good old Riftwing boy. No blocks. Haha. -ha! One, two, three, four. See what you got. Oh, I shouldn't have played a land, but I really wanted to make sure I can breeze in Borrower if they like flashed in a blocker or something. Ooh. Mirari's Wake is pretty good. Cast you. Cast this. Um, Sun Titan is actually not that scary. I'm a little bit afraid of them like Incubation Druid level up into Ugin, but right now they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana anyway, so they could just cast him. So I think I'm just gonna pass turn and let them cast a Sun Titan. They only have two cards in hand and one is Sun Titan, so. No, oh, okay, okay, Sun Titan's fine. It's only a permanent. Yeah, so Green Sun Zenith, I don't care about. And if they get overzealous with their attacks, then we just bounce Sun Titan. So their hand is one card, which we don't know about. They don't attack with anybody. Okay, um, I guess I just flashed in a Brazen Borrower. Oh, I really want to bounce this. I bounce Sun Titan, I hardcast Riftwing Cloud Skate, I bounce Incubation Druid, and then they have to chump block Fallen Shinobi. Yeah, that's probably good. Although they chump block and they get back Reclamation Sage with Sun Titan. Maybe that's not good. What do I want to do here? I can cast this and just attack for three. Wait, how much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. Cast. I'm going to Riftwing Cloudscape my own Fallen Shinobi. And then I can attack with Brazen Borrower and then Ninjutsu it. And then I can still have Brazen Borrower bounce activation up. This is going to be, this is going to be some plays right here. Ooh, I like the Freebooter. So... This is going to cost five. I'm going to have one floating. Then this can fall in Shinobi. Yeah, so I have all the mana to do what I want. We're going to cast this. Oh, wait a second. I think I want to keep um a blue untapped because this is going to cast him, but then I don't have any... I can use my white mana now. Yeah, that works. So cast this, zero. And then I'm going to use the one mana to cast a Thraven Inspector. Fall in Shinobi, hold up Brazen Borrower. Okay. Cast you. Attack with the borrower. Oh, would you look at that? It's a fallen shinobi. <laughs> Beautiful. Get in there, boys. So it's awkward if I hit crater hoof, but at least they don't have a crater hoof then. Also, I can do some good stuff with Ugin's like minus two or something. Oh, tooth and nail. Let's play Savannah. It's only top two. Oh, I thought it was three. Okay. Um, I can just cast Tooth and Nail to put Kite Sail, Freebooter, and Blade Splicer into play. I'm trying to think what creatures I can look up. There really are none. So let's cast this, put two creature cards onto the battlefield. And then they still have Crater Hoof in their deck, but that's okay. We'll see what the last card is in their hand. Okay, get out of there. So we know the last card, and we pass turn. We could just kill them next turn, I imagine. 
Yeah, we can kill them exactly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, can't kill them exactly, but I can like do a lot. What is this much mana? If they have Ugin, I'm gonna cry. OP, no. Okay, Golos. That was a good draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How much does he need? Seven. All right, Golos it is. So I think I actually have to disenchant right now. So they have to activate before they tutor. Decreases their chance. I think it's basically Crater Hoof. Um, these Kozilek doesn't do it. Okay, they're dead. Good. I was gonna say it's either like Crater Hoof, Ugin, or Bust. And it's Elves of Deep Shadow, Carry Added. Those are a lot of blockers, though. Can I actually kill them in the air? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because this gets plus one off Mirari's Wake, so we can in fact win this game. Because I can cast Brazen Borrower off Island plus Abyssin's Pilgrim. That'll do it. Brazen Borrower. Nine in the air exactly. We beat the Golos deck. I respect their deck. Ooh, Days would have been kind of nice there. Um, I could have flipped Legion's Landing, but whatever. They don't have any reach. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. That was close. That was very close. See you guys round two. All right, all right. Let's go first. Yeah. This hand is a little bit slow, but we're on the play. I don't think I would keep a hand like this on the draw, although maybe. Yeah, I probably still would. It has all of our colors, which is rare for a deck like this. But I really, like, in general, I don't like playing multicolored aggro decks in Vintage Cube. It's just like, they're a little bit too slow normally. Oh, that's a good way to overcome the opposition. Uh, I think I actually want to... I think I have a bad land. But I want double blue, but I already have Tundra. All right, so we're gonna play this and fetch. See what I have access to. Goblet Shrine and Badlands. I don't need that much white. I'll just get a Badlands. And then I'm gonna crack the clue, but not yet. Cause there's nothing I can play this turn off the clue. Cause I'm gonna go down to zero cards or zero mana. Okay, now I'm gonna crack this. I should have played, oh no, they're gonna hit Tundra Island. I know it. Okay, I can work with this. I still can play Geist. And I'm actually going to play Geist. It's just so much more mana efficient here. I should have played Tundra, I, I guess, to play around specifically him to Torok. Mmm, that's bad. Okay. That kind of completely halts all my aggression. But it's cool, it's cool. I can draw a blue source and just jam opposition here. Or Godless Shrine. Do this. Check out your hand. Oh boy, they're gonna Den Protector back. Him to Torok. All right, let's try and get opposition down as fast as possible then, I suppose. Yep, it's a good attack. Then they play Den Protector. Oh my gosh, what even is their hand? I took Liliana. They played a forest this turn. They drew Skull Clamp. All right. I normally hate on that card. Right now it's looking pretty good, I will say. Oh, they played a Swamp. So there's still a forest in their hand. Mmm... All right, I can hit you for one. This is way too slow. That Ophiomancer just completely halted everything. They attack again, then they clamp it. And I don't want to block with Thraben Inspector because the only way I win this is basically locking them down with opposition. Like it doesn't matter how many cards they have in hand if they don't have any mana or like their creatures are tapped. They played a forest. Okay, so that's all I know about their hand. Oh gosh. So now they clamp the snake. This is just some good old-fashioned value right there. They draw Progenitus. Okay, I don't think I can win this game. There's an, Okay, maybe I can. Island, Opposition. Let's see. I guess I'll do it in draw step, because what else does it matter? So they have Mesmeric Fiend on top. I don't care about that. I think my plan basically has to be... Oh, Ophiomancer is so good because they can actually clamp the snake. So I have to tap something on my upkeep. I think I'm going to tap here. They're going to draw Yawgmoth too. And they just have... I'll just tap one. I need to tap their creatures so I can actually attack. Yep. Protection from humans. <laughs> so I actually cannot tap down Yawgmoth. Or no, no, no. Opposition does the targeting. Never mind. But he surprisingly has protection from some of my board. Okay, that just puts one counter. I think it lands on top. This is an insane start from the opponent. I like it, although it's bad for me. I like it. 
Fiend doesn't do anything. They're actually going to sack it in response, I imagine, to kill the Freebooter. Oh no, opponent! You're supposed to kill it now so that I don't get it back. I mean, it, it ended up the same, but for anyone watching, Mesmeric Fiend is templated the same way as Oblivion Ring, so if it leaves before it returns the card, they just never get it back. So I'm actually going to let them attack, because I want to get in a hit with Geist. This. Tap down this guy. Tap down this thing. They get a snake. I draw Caracas. That's actually quite good. That's actually very good. Um, I can either Caracas Yogmoth, but I think I'm just going to attack with Geist and then Caracas the Geist. This gives me an avenue towards victory. The Joys of Hexproof. Unfortunately, I cannot play Geist and um, activate Shambling Event, but I could just do that next turn. They're drawing Sylvan Library. They kill this. Yeah, that's this is where things get awkward because they're just gonna kill all my stuff, so I can't opposition them, or not. Oh gosh, they're gonna proliferate. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, what are you drawing? Natural Order. I think I'm dead. I guess I tapped on you. I think I'm just dead to Natural Order Crater Hope. Although Progenitus is in their deck. Yeah, they're doing the mean thing. So we got to tap down stuff without having any idea what's going on. But we'll tap down, I guess, Yawgmoth. Well, I could just, no, yeah, we'll tap him down. All my guys die. They get back Liliana. Here's where a time warp would be useful. Doesn't matter the order. So if they have a crater hoof, they can just skull clamp into natural order. So this tells me a lot about like their deck composition. Hmm. Okay. They're doing that. And the natural order, I guess we'll see what they hit. I don't know if Crater Hoof is lethal now, because I can tap down one of the attackers. I thought Progenitus... Oh, that was pretty slick. So Progenitus was in their hand, but they discarded it to the Yawgmoth Proliferate. I was actually... I disappeared and came back. I know you didn't see it by the edit magic of editing, but yeah. I disappeared when they proliferated, so I didn't see that cool play. Okay, so they do not have a Crater Hoof. And Morph is a Den Protector. So beginning of combat, we're going to tap down Oracle. They hit me for two. As long as I can stay above ten life. Vaccine Revoker can name Yawgmoth. Can it, does that work on Den Protector? I guess Den Protector isn't even that scary right now. So yeah, let's just play Revoker. And I have to name Yawgmoth. Yawgmoth Thraben, Thran Physician? Is that what he is? Hang on. That is in fact him, Yogmoth Thran Physician. I go Swamp, attack with Geist, activate Karakas, block, bounce him, but I think I'm just dead. Yep. Do this. Ah, I tapped all my blue. That's fine. I can activate Shambling Vent. Ah, I tapped all my blue. That's actually not fine. But I kind of need Shambling Vent back on defense anyway to make sure I don't just like immediately die to everything. But now they get to like him to Torok. Yeah. So this is going to tap down the Oracle. Den Protector hits me for one, two, three. If they attack with Progenitus, Den Protector and Snake, I don't die. But I really, I don't know if I messed up or not by keeping back Geist. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, Geist goes away. So I don't really know what I can draw here, but we're at one. Yep, goodbye Geist. On the bright side, I'm seeing a large portion of their deck. Liliana, Bellows Bayou. So they almost certainly have like recurring nightmare. Oh, they didn't, oh, they didn't clamp the snake. That's good, that's good. Can tap down the Ophio man, or I, I guess I tap down the zombie. Uh. So I can Karakas Yogmoth. Interesting. Two, three, four. Let's see what we find. Snapcaster Mage doesn't have any targets. Leon and Relic Warder doesn't have any targets. <laughs> I don't think I'm winning this. Take this pile. Uh I also tapped my white. I think I'm dead. I'm dead to Progenitus. I was very close actually. Because I could have hit them for two this turn, I think. I Karakas the Yogmoth. I Snapcaster. Opposition, they'd be at like four. If there was a way for me, if I'd saved Geist, I might have actually been able to kill them. That's kind of crazy. Anyway, so they are green black stuff. I think we can we can beat that. Oh, I don't know if I really need disenchant. 
think I'm, I'm kind of digging this consecrated sphinx action. All right, let's do better. No, that's so close to better, but it's not. Also, Kaya seems insane in this matchup. This hand is also quite terrible. I can't cast anything, but we can mold a five and just hit Dark Confidant Kaya or something. Or this hand, which is kind of awesome too. Getting rid of Silverblade Paladin Swamp. Because Badlands can still cast slash activate Figure of Destiny. Scare him with the Mana Tithe. So yeah, I want to draw Kaya. Because Kaya is like really good here. They have a bunch of one mana elves. They have Skull Clamp. They have some things. I will admit Skull Clamp did kind of beat me that game. But I think they would have won anyway. Don't you dare Thawseys. Oh no. One this deck is really sweet. You don't see many green black decks. Okay. I regret having this many lands, but I had to keep these to get all my colors. And it's not like I was keeping better cards. Lotus Cobra. So I think I'm just going to Teferi bounce that. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm just going to Teferi bounce that. And I cognizantly played my bad lands there because him to Torok could cut me off of black mana, for example. Ooh. Ooh. Don't, th don't hit me. My hand's actually going to be great. I can draw step Thoughtseize. Stop. Don't him to Torok. You didn't have it last turn. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Well, draw step thoughtsies. Caracas can't do anything, but I will play it because I do like Caracas. We're going to do this. I'm going to play Blade Splicer on defense. Hope they don't have anything too crazy. I imagine they Imperial Sealed for Dark Confidant, but we'll see. That forest, they draw a thing. What? Oh no. Well, I can do this at least. So I didn't mess up too much. I meant to do it on the draw step. Okay, I guess I, I don't get Progenitus this turn. It, it ended up the same. It's actually quite weird that they played a land. Oh, I guess they needed to. Actually, this worked out even better because now they can't play double land off Oracle off the top. But Dark Confidant plus Oracle is pretty dope, I'm going to be honest. There's a... Okay, well, you know, <laughs> you can only do so much here. There's, they have Eternal Witness in the Natural Order. Uh, one, two... One, two, three. They can actually just cast it exactly next turn. Oh, yeah, they can definitely cast it. All right, well, we die, I guess. Ugh, and I can't even freebooter it. So I need to be as aggressive as possible now. So I think I attack with a golem. Because they're going to get a progenitus in play. They take it all. Man, this sucks. But the Geist. Play the Kite Sail. Hope we can race somehow. I mean, I guess I got another chance from the Lotus Cobra trigger, but some could say I was being smart. And knowing, knowing that Lotus Cobra would trigger, I could Thought Seize in response to their fourth land. Some could say that was me being smart. Yep, they do that. So we need to hope for a really, really bad Dark Confidant hit. A Sack Rathelos instead of Eternal Witness. Very interesting. So, okay. I was going to say that I think they actually don't want to play lands because... They could hit spells and put those on top for Dark Confidant. And they didn't even attack. I actually have a chance now. I actually have a pretty decent chance. Let's Raven Inspector. Hmm. We're going to Teferi downtick on something. I feel like it's my own Blade Splicer. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I'm one mana short. Oh, that's rough. All right, play Blade Splicer. Um, actually, I want to uh, probably just want to Karakas Geist. Man, that's pretty rough. Hit them for five. Actually, yeah, this kills them. Specifically because they played the land with Oracle. That's kind of funny, actually. If they had not played the land, they would be at seven life right now. But now they're at five and my attacks are lethal. All right, somehow we squeezed that one out. Because I'm pretty sure I know their entire hand. Yeah, we did it. That land off Oracle, I'm telling you. That's what killed them. Um... This is a pretty good Kolagon's Command matchup, but again, I, I think my mana is just way too awkward for that. Um, On the draw, I guess this hand is better than my average draw, but all these double white cards are really bad. But if I can curve like Leonid Relic Order into Teferi, I'll be pretty happy. The thing is, I just don't have any answer to Natural Order, so maybe I should have brought in Force of Will. But if they're going to mulligan to 5, I'm cool with that. Come on, planes. I want them to play Skull Clamp. And me to draw a plane. Oh, okay. I don't hate it. Play this. Go. I don't have a play, but they just kept a one lander and skipped their whole turn. 
Interesting. That must have been a very good hand. Uh, given that, what do I even do? Paired Mesa. Or Tundra. Could just play Silverblade Paladin now? They're not doing anything. Like, I'll just start beating down. What hand did they keep that has one land? What the heck? Alright, we're in the finals. That was really weird. Really weird. See you guys. They're on the play, too. See you guys in the finals. Uh, oh man. Yeah, I'm down for this hand. Holy cow. We got Geist plus Caracas. Combo older than time. Our opponent's just leading on Mutavolt, which means... I'm gonna assume mono red. Per oh, okay. Let's go Seacrum Coast. Raven Inspector. And I'm actually gonna run out Mox Sapphire because they could be playing white and like Thalia me. And I really want to get down Geist next turn. It also bluffs like... Mm, Force Spike, Spell Pierce. I don't know if, I think they took out Force Spike, which is so sad. Force Spike is awesome, but gotta make room for like Narset, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Mutivolt beatdowns, I accept. So we're gonna go Geist, hopefully draw a blue source and then opposition. I feel like against this start, you might wanna hold back Mutivolt. Um, oh, I have double blue. Oh, we just win. Okay, we're fine. This, play Geist, don't daze, okay. Attack. Next turn, I can go Caracas, Opposition, don't do anything. And then we like lock down their lands. Because we're, we're basically going to leave them with an untapped Mutavolt. Oh man, that's good. Let's go Caracas. Turn target, non land. Um, do I want to let them counter my Opposition? I think I'm going to attack with Geist. See what they do. If they don't activate, they probably have counter magic. If they do activate, that's actually not too bad because I can just block it, bounce it with Caracas, and then recast it. Tokens go away. Um, I kind of, yeah, we'll just recast Geist. They didn't have days last turn. So this makes me think that he doesn't have counter magic. Basically, opposition is like game over. So I want to make sure it hits. But now they could have cryptic. I have days that I cannot actually cast. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, I can just keep making this play. But I think I like just jamming opposition and seeing what happens. Maybe he doesn't have counter magic. Ooh, okay. Um, at that point, we're just going to pass turn. Brazen Borrower. Oh, no. Gifts Ungiven. Okay. So he must be Storm. That explains the no counter magic. Doesn't explain Mutavolt, though. So that's a little concerning. I love it. Okay, so we need to read uh, Gifts Ungiven. Chooses two cards, and the chosen cards go into the graveyard. So I think we're just going to... Turnabout is actually very good against opposition. So I think I just get rid of Turnabout Mox Emerald. Then they can have land brain freeze, and that's cool. Tap this. And I think I actually want to tap Mutavolt. No, let's really limit the blue mana here. Blue source. Oh, the booty! I like it. So let's just move to combat. I'm going to attack here. They don't even block. That's great. So I can play Kite Sail Freebooter. I guess I do hold up Caracas. Yeah, this is my only black card. Ah oh, man, <laughs> this is why the disruption is key. So they're, I mean, very clearly high tide, whatever. Um, this feels like a force of will consecrated Sphinx matchup. Although on the draw, it's kind of really slow. Kaya, they showed a mox. So Kaya eating mox is, uh, actually I have a lot of other things. So maybe I don't need Kaya. Teferi can stop actually a lot of things. This actually seems like kind of a bad matchup for them. The more I look at it, face spiders is probably bad. So we'll make that switch, but I've strip mine. Duress, Thoughtseize, Kite Sail Freebooter, plus Geist just to kill them. Yeah, this is rough. Oh boy. I'm on the draw, and I need to draw a black source. I can't mulligan this. That's too good. Any black source, I just get to Dark Confidant, plus I have Daze, which should be able to do a lot here. There's our black source. Yes. Yes. Okay. We're going to hold up on Daze. I can Disenchant, turn two. Oh! Whoop! Got him. <laughs> that's pretty good their deck is scarier now though i will say because <clears throat> they it was still a one for one trade and i what <laughs> i'm intrigued now did not expect that one what thalia i have a lot of questions not many answers here i'm gonna take the hit off thalia and bounce her at the end of turn so they can't even recast her did not expect anything that's going on right now all right well, I'm not a coward. We're still going to Dark Confidant. Brain Freeze, Turnabout, Frantic Search, 
And then they go Thalia Brightling. <laughs> this is not at all what I was expecting. They don't give Vigilance. Okay. Take the three. And our plan is to just hit it with Fallen Shinobi and see what the heck is going on. I have absolutely no idea. Recast Thalia, sure. Teferi's actually quite good. So I can't cast Teferi, but I can play a Blade Splicer. So I can block Brightling with the Golem. I can chump block with Dark Confidant if I feel like it's really necessary, but I think just getting way ahead in cards is how I win this game too. Although I do have some six drops in here. I think I like this. Then I can just fall in Shinobi the Blade Splicer. And they have to pay mana into Brightling to let it survive. Oh, what if I block like this? How does this work? So they can... Right now, First Strike kills it. If they give it more toughness, they can only ever kill Dark Confidant. Actually, this block goes really well for me, I think. Right? This can't gain First Strike. Okay. Fair enough. What the heck was that start last game? <laughs> what the heck? All right, I, you, you did it. Played right into Archangel Avacyn, I guess. That's rough. Dark Confidant's gonna hit like a Consecrated Sphinx. Just to land, cool, cool. They have one card in hand, so that's something. I think I'm going to... Oh, I can just Karakas the Archangel Avacyn. Okay, that's not so bad then. Um, I'm still taking a good bit of damage off this. Brightling is doing work. I'll give them that. Heard Mesa, somehow Thalia, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I got thalia We get Tundra. We play Geist. Last turn. But I am getting beat down really hard, I'm gonna be honest. But their creatures are like basically indestructible forever, which is a problem. Aragon's Warden is Eat Dark Confidant, I'm cool with this. I'm still taking a whole lot of damage. Double Brock Brightling, which forces them to use mana, but I think my best bet here is to bounce Avacyn. Chump block here. Take three, go to five. Turnabout, yeah, as expected. They have more? Oh no, you can't have more. Yeah, Thalia, get out of here! Silver Blade Paladin. That's interesting. I think I'm going to bounce Thalia, then to Fairy plus Duress. Oh, Mist Hexproof, I see. So they must have swords or something. Yeah, we bounce Thalia so I can cast Duress before Teferi. Ooh, Copter. Get out of here, Copter. That was a good pickup. Then we Teferi. Teferi's gonna die, but that's like not the end of the world. Teferi bounces Brightling. So their mana's like very heavily constricted now. I still draw a card. I guess not. Good play. Yeah, it says up to one, but I guess if you target and then they fizzle the target, that just doesn't go through. So they cannot flash in Archangel Lab. Oh, that was a very good Wasteland draw. That was an insane draw for them. Holy cow. I hope they try and flash in Archangel Avacyn, but actually no, because that's boring. It also cuts me off double white. Oh, that's so bad. Me, me. Okay. Ah, oh, that was such a good Wasteland. I wish opponent didn't read. Whoa. What? Okay. I mean, I guess they can't instant speed it, but that's kind of interesting. They're just going to play Brightling again. I'll get into Brightling. Makes sense. <laughs> Not the best thought seeds I've ever seen. I think I'm dying. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hope to get lucky with a Geist hit and go from there. Okay. Fallen Shinobi Ninjutsu. Turn the Angel. See what we can hit. I need like at least one blocker. That's not one blocker. <laughs> uh, I did my best. All right, so they're very much not Storm. They're just blue, white aggro. Um, I can play the Mox, but I actually have to pay mana. If I if Dahlia wasn't in play, I could actually like flash in Snapcaster to block Brightling, but I think I needed to go for it there. Who knows what they could have in their deck. Attack me, yeah, all right, I'm dead. So game three, they're not Storm. They're Something entirely different, which makes me want Fate Spiders again. I don't really need Force of Will. So far, Grandmaster helps with the race, and Consecrated Sphinx is actually kind of good against them. So I think I just bring in Fate Spiders and call it a day. Oh, do I want Kaya? Maybe Kaya over Sphinx. Yeah, that actually seems kind of good, because Kaya can eat like one drops and gains me life and stuff. All right, let's go. We're going to trophy this boy. Let's go first. We got Figure of Destiny into Phyrexian Revoker. We don't have any blue mana. Hmm. This just becomes a 2-2. Two, two. 
If I draw a blue source, this hand becomes like quite good. But if I don't, hmm, I think I can do better. I most certainly can. Holy cow. This is a hand right here. <laughs> Sorry if you just had to see that. Talking to the opponent, they said they learned to draft from watching my channel, which is actually really cool um, that we're facing off right now. Um, definitely keeping this hand. Um, do I keep Factor Fiction or Fallen Shinobi? That's the real question. I think Fallen Shinobi. There's so many creatures I can draw that are just great here. Brainstorm, probably not the best choice for main deck. Oh, it's fine. I don't mind it. Oh, this is the trophy for them too. All right, let's do it. Um, let's go. Yeah, Tundra Mox. I'm gonna have to take two damage off Godless Shrine, but this lets me hold up days without having to like return a land. Actually, this is the only way I can hold up days, I think. Ooh, I like the Borrower. Play this. Play Teffers. So if they want to recall, they have to do it right now. And I think I just uptick. Nothing really to bounce here. And then I can... They said, thanks for saying I'm doing well. Cool, cool. Uh, Pass turn. The game plan here is to, like, end of turn Brazen Borrower, bounce a blocker, play land, and fall on Shinobi then. Hmm, that's fine. Not the best hit for Teferi, but that's okay. Base Feather is also not amazing. Plus Teferi, pass turn. I just need to hit a land in the next two draw steps. Because you can Teferi without any targets, too. Oblivion Ring. Hitting Teferi. Hmm. I think I have to daze that, which is not amazing. But it lets me preserve Brazen Borrower, I suppose. Ooh, the Goose. I actually like that more. Play the Goose. I am still going to uptick Teferi. Last turn. Like, if they want to play, spend their whole turn casting... Oh, no! There goes my black mana! Ah! Okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. That was pretty good, okay. See what you got going on. Figure of Destiny. So, we're going to bounce Mentor. Draw Thoughtseize, which I cannot cast. I think I'm just going to attack for two. That was a very good Wasteland. Punishing me for having greedy mana. I take four... I'm going to hold up Brazen Borrower now. This lack of land draws is really hurting me. But usually Screw beats Flood. Gideon. So I'm pretty... Teferi can't bounce Planeswalker. So I'm actually pretty happy they went for Gideon there. Because now I can bounce it. Petty Theft, return you. There's the Swamp. So we're going to Thoughtseize. Oh, I can draw step Thoughtseize. That's right. Uptick Teferi. I need to put a stop in the draw step. I'm going to attack for two. Play Figure of Destiny. And seeing their hand is going to be huge here. Turnabout, Revelark, Monastery, Mentor, Gideon. Hmm. So they can go... Turnabout's interesting. I'm actually not that scared of Revelark. Yeah, I'm not that scared of Revelark because I can just bounce it. Mentor, 1, 2, 3. So they can go 1, 2, 3, 4, play a land, Turnabout, and then go Mentor into Gideon. So I think I want to take one of the two. And I think I'm just going to take Gideon because I can also bounce Monastery Mentor. Although I could just face Fetters the Gideon. Yeah, that's actually fine. Oh, wait a second. They can just Revel Arc. Hmm. I can face Fetters the Revel Arc. That was actually kind of awkward. Yeah, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Because they just cast Revel Arc. Oh, okay. Well, this works out. Yeah, because basically Thoughtseize put... I thought this was Vendelian Click because I did it in the draw step and, you know, that kind of makes sense. Um, but it, it puts it in the graveyard, so Revelark is actually a problem. Earthwing, Cloud Skate, Suspend. Teferi still being annoying, as always. Or not Teferi, um, Gideon. So, I think I can kill Gideon here. We uptick Teferi. They can kill Geist, right? So, I attack Gideon with the 4-4, four, four, and then these two. I cannot actually kill Gideon. I can put him to 1, and I lose my Geist into their Muta Vault. But their hand is... Um, Turnabout, Island, Revelark. So they just go Island, Revelark. Not really where you want to be. So I think my game plan here is to suspend Cloud Skate. Just pass turn. Attack, attack. I trade for that. Gideon doesn't die. But either way, I have to block with Muta Vault. So I guess I'm better off just attacking. Right, they animate, block here, block here. Gideon goes to one. Then they can attack to Fairy down quite a bit. No, that's so bad. Yeah, this turn did not go well for me. Okay, so they go Island, and Turnabout is also a huge deal. But they'll be telegraphing. Oh wait, they can't even do it instant speed. That's fine. They turn about my blockers, kill Teferi maybe? 
I give it vigilance, but not indestructible. I think you wanted to give it indestructible. Because now I could just block like this. Level up. And now they can't cast Rebel Arc. And again, any land! <laughs> any land, please! I'm begging you. Oh, this is coming down too. Okay, we drew the land. So, there's a lot I can do now. Obviously, we uptick to Fairy. Um, they can minus six Gideon to exile Fallen Shinobi, but I'm already getting in a hit. And it trades for Shinobi. So, that's actually fine. I'm just going to attack them with both. And then we're going to Shinobi the Angel. Give me the goods. Uh, is that their figure of destiny? I believe it is. All right, I got a figure of destiny, that's fine. And they have to basically lose their Gideon to... Uh, yeah, they have to basically lose their Gideon to kill my Fallen Shinobi. <laughs> the opponent said nice. Yeah, not the greatest thing, but I had, I had one, I got a new one. Why did planes get revealed? Oh, I see, it was exiled, I get it. So their hand is Turnabout Rebel Arc, two unknowns. I attack Teferi. I'm actually going to block because Teferi is pretty valuable because they have turnabout. And if they get greedy and try and go up to 7 with Gideon, at that point I might just face fighters. The problem is they just get to play Revel Arc. And then if Revel Arc dies... Oh, they didn't activate Gideon! Oh, no opponent! Oh, uh, that's probably the game. That's probably the game. Well, they're just actually dead here, but... I can Silverblade Paladin Soul Bond with the... No, 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 wait. Yeah, that actually works. Right? Let me, let me think about this. I Silverblade Paladin, they can't cast or do anything. I can bounce Revel Arc to get rid of their blocker and they just get these two, which doesn't matter. But if I don't take Teferi, they get a mana. <laughs> I'm just going to go for the win right here. Play Silverblade Paladin. I'm going to say no. Teferi's going to bounce Revel Arc. They get these two back. I lose to... If their last card in hand is like Swords to Plowshares, I guess. But that's it. Attack them. Do you have the swords? Attack you. Soul bond? Yes. If they had swords, they would have used it on their turn, so. I'll say GG's. GG's! I it's hard because I want to like talk to my opponent before the games are over. Cause like it just disappears and we can't talk. But I don't want to be preemptive with the GG's if they like path me or something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thanks so much, Draft MTG. You the homie. That was good games. So good games to you and we got another trophy with the very, very suspicious deck. I don't know. I don't know about this one, but it worked. I don't know. We got there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you guys soon.